Hello ladies and gentlemen, RoderyX here, back with more Let's Play Skies of Arcadia. And we're doing the side quests. What few side quests there actually are, since we've already got all the, uh... <laughs> the discoveries and crew members and whatnot. So, starting off, you're going to come here to Maramba. And... Or, not Maramba, uh, Esperanza. And when you get here into Esperanza, this is going to be a very lengthy back-and-forth side quest in order to get the final Abrek Cham. So I left a fair bit of this in, and then I, I cut out a lot of the, the back and forth, because that's really all it is. We go from uh, Esperanza to Maramba, Esperanza, Maramba, Esperanza, Nasrad, Gordos Bistro, Maramba, Esperanza, it, it's back and forth. So we go in here to the uh, the tavern here in... Esperanza, and one of the, the tavern people that we talked to a little bit when we came to get Don is the barmaid here. Tavern Keep. So, now that we've completed the Dark Rift, and we really could have started this when we came back to get Don, but we couldn't have finished it until later. So, this Tavern Keep ended up falling in love, moving out to the boonies here with her be uh, beloved, found out that he didn't love her as much, ran off with someone else, and she's stuck here. And uh, in doing so, she basically disobeyed her mom and messed everything up. And But she, she never stopped loving her mom, but, you know, stuff happens. So she wants us to see if we can help patch things up between her and her mom. And in order to do that, we need to show her mom that there is something about her daughter that will, will keep her from hating her completely. So, this is the Cabal Skewer side quest. So, we've talked to the daughter, and we're going to go back to Maraba, and we're going to talk to the mother. And the mother is just going to be a complete pain. We actually did not talk to her when we first went there. So... For those of you who don't remember where things are, basically, it's it's really not far. I really don't understand why the daughter can't just, you know, get on a boat and go back to Maramba. Now that, you know, we've gone through the, the Dark Rift and, you know, actually at this point, the Sky Rift, actually, I think the Sky Rifts are actually gone at this point because Soltis has risen. I forgot what had happened when I did this the first time. It's like, why, why can't you just go back? I mean, I know Esperanza is like, no one goes there, but I'm sure people will go there now, now that the Dark Rift is traversable. So, but anyway, I, I, I don't know. So, as it is, we, we get to play Messenger Pigeon. So, we get here to Maramba, which is pretty much the same as when we left it. And inside the actual main city of Maramba, you don't have to go on the 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 that thing. I think it's called a Dommel. No, Dommels are from Final Fantasy XI. So I have no idea what the hell that thing's called anymore. I really don't. So many you know mythical game creatures in my mind right now. So this is the Cabal Sc Sc Skewer. Yeah, Cabal Skewer lady. You're a sailor. I don't like sailors. My daughter ran off with one, so therefore I hate all of them, because you're all the same thing. Sweeping generalizations. So, and her mom doesn't even seem to care. She, oh, she's probably lying in a gutter somewhere. And if this is the first time you've talked to her, you have to talk to her twice to actually progress the story. So if you did not talk to her, either the first or second time you came here to pick up, or through your first run through here, or to pick up Khalifa, uh, talk to her twice here, otherwise it's going to take a little while to do the, the quest, because you'll end up going back and forth an extra time that you don't need to. So, we tell her her daughter's alive, and in Esperanza, and her daughter misses her, and she doesn't believe us. She's like, screw it, I'm not going to give my daughter a second chance. So I cut out the, the trip back and forth, like I said. No sense in it. And we tell the the tavern keep the, the sad news that her mom doesn't believe her, doesn't care. Mom's a bitch. I mean, to be fair, daughter ran off, so, I mean, bitchy for a reason. 
but, you know. So, we come up with the idea of, hey, can you prove to your mom that there's something that will still show that you care and keep her in your heart? It's like, oh, I can make a cabal skewer. It's what my mom does. She taught me how to make it when I was younger. So I'll make that, it'll be fantastic, and, you know, food will mend our relationship. Which, you know, food is a very powerful motivator in a lot of things, and I would not be surprised if, you know, a good meal could mend a relationship. Probably could. So we get one Cabal Skewer on our second trip. So we're going to take this Cabal Skewer back to Maramba and give it to the mother. And... We're going to see her reaction. Hey, your daughter made this for you. It's the thing that you're making right now. Yeah, I'm persistent. What's it to you? It's a cabal skewer. So she remembers what it is. And the mother's like, oh, well, she, she remembers, but it's not good enough. She, she made it with crappy stuff. No, it's nothing like the cabal skewer that... First, the person who made this can't be my... I taught her better than this. Well, she's in, you know, a crap hole. Like, there's no... There's not really good ingredients. So, yeah. So even though we've proven that the daughter remembers how to make it, it's not good enough quality to actually convince her that it's either her daughter or that her daughter cares enough. Seriously, really? Really? Alright, so we come back to Maramba, or Esperanza. I keep, I'm going to get those two confused back and forth. So, so we brought, we took it to your mom, your mom didn't like it. Sorry. Smell funny, it wasn't spiced correctly, and the quality of the meat used is different. Yeah, there's no way I can duplicate my mother's skewers in, with ingredients in this town. I remember exactly how to cook it, but I don't have the same ingredients. It's like, tell us what you need, and we'll bring it to you. Okay, this is... Now it's getting even crazier. Not only are we playing Messenger Pigeon, we're playing uh, Shopping Assistant. So we need to get these three ingredients. Gentum Kale Cabal. Now, one of them is only obtainable if you find the Spice Island Discovery which we already have, so we actually took that. So if you go back to whatever episode that I, I did where I found that, we actually took one of those three from it. The other ingredients are a little easier to find without, you know, requiring a... Well, actually, they still require a guide, because who would think that you need to go to the item shop in Nasrad, talk to the shopkeeper, don't buy anything from him, just talk to him, and he will offhand mention that he has one of the ingredients makes no sense to me. Talk about various things. Gentum. 500 per pouch. Yeah. Well, there is actually a way to figure out where all of these ingredients are, and that's Gordo's Bistro. If you go and actually speak to Gordo about these three ingredients, that, hey, we're doing a quest involving food, Gordo's your guy. So we come here to Gordo's, and he will actually have one of the ingredients as well. And it's said that you can't get it until after the Hydra, but this is before the Hydra, obviously, because he has not joined the Armada yet, because he's still here in his shop. And you can actually get it now, so keep that in mind. You don't have to wait for him to join the Armada to join us, because he's still a, a shop proprietor. So we're looking for ingredients. So he has Cabal here in his restaurant, so he'll give us some. Always best to marinate it for a day or two. Fantastic. And if you are curious as to where the other ingredients are, he will give you hints. Gentum can be found in Maramba. Maybe you should go to the very center of trade itself, Nasrat. See? Exactly. That's where you need to go. Kale, the spice of dreams, as it is sometimes called. It's apparently a really rare spice, so how does the lady in Maramba have so much of it that she's been making cabals for years? In the eastern world, there's an island where they say spice trees grow. So, that's really your only hint to Spice Island other than if you buy a hint from the Sailor's Guild. So, once you have all three of those, we already had the, the spice from Spice Island, we, had the gen we just bought the gentum, and Gordo gave us the kale. 
So we bring all three of those back here to Esperanza, give them to the barkeep, and she will make a perfect Cabal Skewer. So let's give her all of the stuff. We found all three of them, including the legendary spice that no longer really exists. How do you do... What? Uh, I, I'm going to make, you know, spices out of plants that only existed in the uh, Paleolithic area, era. And you, I'm going to have a stockpile of it, but I'm going to require someone out in the middle of nowhere to magically acquire some to prove to me that their dish is the same as mine. That's the level that we've got. And we actually get Mom's Skewer. That's how you prove... That's the proof that it is... That's the final... Final Skewer we will need to make. So we bring that back here to Maramba. Like, give it to the Cabal Skewer lady. Yeah, taste this one. And shut your trap. And we'll see her reaction to this one. Uh, I can't believe it. Your daughter says she never once forgot about the time she spent with you, and she hasn't forgotten anything you've taught her. Oh, She's begging for your forgiveness. Tell her that it'll taste even better if she leaves it on the fire for another 30 seconds. Exactly 30 seconds. Only 30 seconds. Any more than that, you've just freaking ruined it. Alright, but with this, she, you know, kind of admits that her, her daughter, you know should be forgiven, even, you know, that's kind of a backhanded, backhanded comment of, oh, it's great, but it could be better. But she does forgive her daughter. So we come back to give the tavern keep the good news that your mother forgives you, should you ever make it back to Maramba, you know, she'd welcome you with open arms, etc, etc, and that your mother loved the, the Cabal Skewer, but to cook it a little bit longer next time, because it's just not quite perfect. And she demands perfection from you. I kind of wonder why the daughter ran off to begin with. If this is the way her, her mom acts about trying to ask her forgiveness. And she's overwhelmed with joy, so she gives us an Aubrey Cham. Where she got it, I, I don't know. Where any any of these people got the three the only three Aubrey Chams in the entire world. So, with this, we are only missing one... No, two Chams in the very final dungeon to get the final cupel. Which is really entertaining because I've never actually gotten the final cupel because I never had access to the DLC content before now. So, and the next thing I'm going to do in this side quest is I'm going to show off something that is probably one of the most annoying things in the game. Once... This one is actually after defeating Galcian and after defeating the Hydra. Come back to the Dark Rift, and there will be a new creature hanging out in the final save point room of the Dark Rift. So if you come in through the Yafutoman side, you come straight here. You see there's a giant black looper just kind of hanging out. Go up to him and click on him. Uh, use the A button. And you would think this is it would be a ship battle because of his size. It's not. He apparently shrinks down to normal looper size. And we fight him on the deck. Now, this looper is Elsian. He is the most difficult creature in the entire game. He only has about 10,000 HP. He can give you uh, 30,000 HP that will be spread amongst the surviving members of your group, and he will give 30 magic XP. He also hits with incredible force. His Pyre spell that we blocked would do a ridiculous amount of damage, probably in the, uh, the 2,000 plus range damage for a regular Pyre spell. His Regular hits can do about 2,500. His critical hits can do about 3,300. So, the strategy for this fight is you want to be very careful. Skull Shield to ne negate all physical damage. Delta Shield to negate all magical damage. Now, the problem is his regular attack can and usually will inflict fatigue. And from what I can tell, there's only 
two items in the game that protect against f fatigue. There's the uh, Constitution gem that you get here in the Dark Rift, and then the Everlasting gem. And other than that, I have not been able to find anything that protects item-wise other than those two. But you want to protect against the physical damage. People say to bring Enrique in this fight so that, you know, you can use Justice Shield to have the damage, but you're still going to take half damage, which is about 1,500 points of damage, and you are still going to run the risk of getting f fatigued. So I just went the route of let's have Vice use Skull Shield to negate all of the physical damage, and we'll just run the risk of fatigue after that. I brought Drachma in, and as you can see, I gave him his other two abilities. I gave him Spirit Charge, which is his second ability, which is uh, zero spirit, and he charges double what his normal focus would be. So it's actually very useful for that, especially since it you know requires no uh, no spirit whatsoever. And then he also has Hand of Fate, which is one of the uh, suggested attacks that you aim from him and Vice and have them use their special attacks uh, Hand of Fate and uh, Pirate's Wrath. Well, even an ink from Pirate's Wrath is only going to do about 3,000 points of damage. And Hand of Fate, its big effect is it can instantly kill something if it can be instantly killed. This Looper, as far as I can tell, is immune to instant death. So it will just do high damage. And even its high damage is not going to be comparable to Pirate's Wrath, especially for spending the 10 SP for it. So, the strategy that I've been going with is supercharging all of my spirit to do Prophecy, which, as you saw on this run, did 57,000, or 5,700 points of damage. Huh. That was which easy. is about half, a little, little over half his 10,000 HP. The biggest downside about this creature is it can, will, can and will run, like you just saw. And if you do that, you have to leave the dungeon and come back for it to respawn. I've tried going into other rooms, to see if it comes back, it never does. So I've just left the dungeon, come back, and it will come back. So you have to be able to get two prophecies off before it runs like a normal looper. Not easy. Not easy at all. So, what... As you see here, I've done a couple of I've done a couple other fights where I've sped it up and added a remix of the battle theme. The artist and link to their channel will be in the description of the video. Uh, I have beaten this looper once. However, I did not get it on camera <laughs> because I was not expecting it to work. I was trying out a random strategy, which was the prophecy to see how that would work, and I it worked, and then when I tried to duplicate it, is all of these uh, encounters that you see here, and after three times, actually five times, I didn't do the other two as well, I got fed up with it and said, no, screw this. Supposedly this looper will 100% drop a Moonberry. The one time I beat him, he did not drop a Moonberry, he dropped a Zal Seed. It says that that is also a possible drop, as well as uh, a black map and a Valuan Metal. I I got none of those. I just got the Zala Seed. So I don't know if one of the other drops will negate the Moonberry drop, if the Moonberry drop is the more common one, or it just has a much higher drop rate than regular Moonberries, which is only 1% from random encounters, so maybe it has a higher drop rate. But people, most guides I found say 100%, but the only time I beat it, I didn't get one. So. I don't know. Uh, I will be farming him off screen because as you've seen, even though he runs, you still get 20 magic XP from the fight. Even if you don't kill him, just taking turns against him was enough to get some magic XP. So this is a good way to level up your magic without maxing out your character's levels if you wanted to do that. Like if you just wanted to have all the magic before going into the final dungeon, and you didn't want to be ridiculously over-leveled for the final dungeon and final fights, you can do this, which is something I'm probably going to do. I do kind of want to get all of the, the spells, but 
uh, we'll see how it goes, because I, I kind of just want to finish up this project. But, uh, the video will be over in just a moment. I wanted to, to make sure all of that was, was thrown in there, that we have this fight, optional fight, Dark Rift, really, really annoying, but still worth trying even if you don't get anything from it, even if you manage to not defeat him. So I'm going to end this episode here, and I will see you guys in the next installment where I continue on with more side quests. Till then, later everyone.